So the Oracle's attention shifted to Tati, Rao's sister, now 21 and bitter at the world. Cursed with a line from The Mark of Kree, filled with anger and hatred for the Kasai, she walked a knife edge between good and evil as she sought to destroy those who had killed her family. Rao and Tati were searching for a tree that was an oracle. I remember him instructing her to be stealthful as we arrived at the outskirts of the city. Nangari was a dangerous place, and so they should split up. He would take to the roofs, while she, the streets. Um, I'm Tim Donnelly. I'm a producer on Rise of the Kasai. I work at Sony Santa Monica Studios, and I work with Bottle Rocket, who's in San Diego, who's making the game Rise of the Kasai. Yeah, the basic story for Rise of the Kasai is it's been set in a period of ten years before Mark Cree and ten years after and if you haven't played the game Mark Cree, it doesn't matter because Rise of the Kasai will give you an overview and the story plays out and tells you everything that's going to happen in Mark Cree. Basically it gives you, there's no problem with going from one to the other. Um, what it is, it's set in, uh, in a peri period past, it's set with Bamusu and Grizz and they're set in the ten years before and in the ten years after it's set with uh, Rao and Tati. So the game is played out through the cinemas and the gameplay actually. I think one of the things that's evolved from the, the Mark of Kree into Rise of the Kasai is there's more characters and there's more combat opportunities, there's more uh, gameplay opportunities, you have more weapons uh, besides larger levels. Uh, one of the things you have now is, like for instance, Toddy has uh, puffer mushrooms, which are sort of like a time bomb, a delayed time bomb. You could set them against a wall, you could put them on an enemy. When they get triggered, they explode and cause a big cloud of gas and that kills all the enemies around. Uh, each character now sort of has its own, their own abilities. Again, Toddy has uh, the ability to go camouflage. Um, Bamusu and Grizz. Uh, Bamusu is sort of a heavy fighter. He's got the ability, he's got his heavy axe. He can slice guys in half. Uh, Grizz is sort of a stealth, zen fighter. He takes a very focused approach. Uh, his kills are very precise, very methodical. In Rise of the Kasai, you're given an AI partner uh, in every level. One of the things that happens is that when you start the level, you select who you want to be. In this case, you get to, let's say, pick the choice is Rao and Toddy. If you pick Rao, the game will select Toddy and it will play as an AI partner. The AI partner uh, in Rise of the Kasai is really necessary because some of the levels, it requires cooperation. The whole game has been designed uh, as a cooperative gameplay experience, so you can't there's, there's like goals in the game that need to have a partner, so let's say it's whether it's switches, enemies being killed, paths being taken. Uh, you don't always start out together, you sometimes have divergent paths, you start out separately and you guys can converge, you can, you can go ahead of the AI partner, you can pull back, um, it depends on what you want to do. And in Rise of the Kasai, uh, the two characters, Toddy and Grizz, they're both marked with uh, one of these, for lack of a better word, they're evil tattoos, the Mark of Kree. They're spells, essentially evil spells that are trying to corrupt him. Uh, in this game, uh, Grizz has sort of mastered his spell. He's, he's Toddy's mentor, and he's trying to teach her how to control her spell. Toddy is being tempted by the spell through the whole game, and she's being tempted towards the evil side. So throughout the game, you get this dynamic of the evil that's trying to tempt Toddy and how she's learned from Grizz to sort of focus her powers. Yeah, in Rise of the Kasai, you have uh, one of the things that happens is, you know, I should just go through some of the basics that are different. Uh, you have larger levels. It's about three times as big level-wise. Uh, the gameplay experience is about 25 plus hours. Uh, you have boss characters, so you have these huge boss characters you're fighting. In the first game, you were fighting mostly humanoids. In this game, you fight the humanoids and you get boss characters. You have more interactive environments. Um, you've got the different weapons, which require sort of a different level of technology and the different abilities of the characters. You know, you've got the camouflage, the puffer mushrooms, the uh, new weapons, the new kills, the new disarms. So you see it, you'll see it in the game. I mean, you have a lot of you know, graphical improvements and you also have a lot of combat improvements in Rise of the Kasai. In Rise of the Kasai, the, uh, the team, Bottle Rocket, they've really wanted to do something special. So what they've done is they've created these sort of... Uh, they call them, I guess, sketch cinemas, uh, sumi brushes. They look like you know, comic books come to life. Uh, they're basically they're the things that sort of push the story forward between the levels. They're what give you the backstory. They're just sort of set to distinguish the game in some unique way. You know, they're, they're basically they're your intro to the level. They're in the previous game in Mark Cree, they had a, a sketch, just a single sketch that would fade in from one from the actual sketch to the game. And here you've got these sort of animated 
developed huge, beautiful, exquisite uh, movies that fade in from the, from the cinema into the games. The one thing I say about Rise of the Kasai in the end is it's a it's an exciting game. It allows you to play a lot of different ways. It isn't just, let's say, an action game. It isn't just a stealth game. It's pretty much the game you want it to be. Um, you've got a lot of new characters. You've got a lot of bigger levels. You've got a lot more gameplay opportunities. Uh, uh, Rise of the Kasai for PlayStation 2 will be out on March 15th.